And joining us now is decorated Marine Corps officer and Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton of Massachusetts, who was part of the first wave of Marines to enter Baghdad and serve four tours, four tours in Iraq, all during the Civil War, of course. Congressman, take us back two decades. Um, what are you thinking now about the U.S. invasion? Well, look, as, as Richard was just explaining, it's a complicated legacy. The whole history of Iraq is complicated. The invasion went very well, and believe it or not, we were greeted with flowers in Baghdad because so many Iraqis were thrilled we had gotten rid of this vicious dictator. Then the country descended into civil war, as you've documented. And we came back with a surge. It was actually a successful counterinsurgency strategy. But then I think most people think we pulled out too quickly and we just had to turn it back around and return a few years later with ISIS. Today, Iraq is had glimpses of, of real, a real bright future, a, a potential to be a real democracy, a beacon for hope in the Middle East. But it also has tremendous Iranian influence, uh, a lot of corruption, as Richard, de as, as Richard detailed. So it's a complicated legacy. And the point is that that's why it's complicated for us veterans. It's, there's no simple answer to what is the history or what is the legacy of the Iraq war. I think all of us who fought there are having mixed emotions on an anniversary like this. You, of course, became a critic of the war that you were serving in because the intel community truly believed that there were WMDs, weapons of mass destruction, and it was just a false reading of the intelligence and the analysis. How do you balance your opposition to the war with the fact that you served and are proud, of course, of your service? You know, I just never wanted anyone to go in my place. And, and that's not unusual. I think most veterans feel the same way. I kept going back tour after tour because I didn't want someone to fight for my freedom. And that's a story that you hear a lot. But you're right, you know, thinking about 20 years ago today, when we were on the eve of the invasion or starting the invasion itself, we were all in chemical weapons suits. We fully believed the intelligence that said we would get hit with chemical weapons on the way to Baghdad. That was our expectation. We were very young. Um, a lot of the guys in my platoon were just 18 or 19 years old. And the very night of the invasion, they brought two 17-year-olds to join us, uh, Matt Sturm and Mark Solti, who came to my platoon the night of the invasion. And that was their first introduction to the active duty of Marine Corps. It shows you just how young the troops are. Uh, and we put so much of a burden on their shoulders. Now, you've also been very, uh, very active in getting that burn pit legislation through. So, you know, how important is that and taking care of our veterans, the high suicide rate and the way Iraq war veterans were treated? You know, I've done a lot of work on, on mental health, starting with just explaining my own process of coming to terms with post-traumatic stress. And first of all, I, you know, I call it post-traumatic stress, not post-traumatic stress disorder, because as one of my best friends in the Marines said once, he said, Seth, after what we went through, it would be a disorder if you weren't affected by it. But coming to terms with that, coming to terms with that as an individual, as a veteran, and then coming to terms with it as a country has been a struggle. I've done a lot of work on mental health because in the 20 years, uh, in the past 20 years, about four times as many American service members have died by suicide as died in combat. Now think about that and think about how much more work we do, we need to do to save veterans from that scourge of suicide today. I have passed the 988 bill to establish a new three-digit nationwide hotline to ensure that anyone in America, veteran or not, can get help in a moment of crisis. And that very much came from my experience dealing with mental health in Iraq and having the inspiration, I have to say this too, Andrea, having the inspiration of so many younger Marines I served with coming to terms with their own post-traumatic stress and getting them themselves help even before I did. There, there, there are so many times when I look back on this war and I think about how much I learned from the young Americans, the young Marines, the some of the most amazing Americans I've ever met in my life that I had the privilege to serve with, even in that complicated war.